Hello everyone, Kanasa here and welcome to a brand new series on this channel. Although that is technically incorrect because this is a revivify of an older series that I did. Coming home. And essentially, I wanted to restart this for a number of reasons. One, the last episode of Coming Home came out about six months ago. So to be honest, I have completely forgotten what my plans were for the series. And I imagine I would have had to have done a recap and I thought, well, let's just restart this. Two, I have added a few mods that would need a restart. The most critically important of those being Principia. Because if you add Principia to an in-progress save, well, that's going to balk everything up. Adding, adding, adding <laughs> even, end-body physics to an in-progress save is never a good idea. So because of that, we are going to do a little bit of a rejig, a restart of this series. And another big critical mod that I have added that wasn't present in the old series is I have decided to rescale road and the entire system three and a half times the size. And because of that, well, Delta V requirements are going to be massively increased. They have been increased astronomically. Yes, no, <laughs> it's, it's going to be, we're going to need a lot more Delta V to get around. The lander that I was working on for this ass, 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 ash mission, not an ass mission. Sounds weird when a British person says ass like that. Uh, Ash mission is going to be 4,000 meters per second to actually get to the surface of Ash and then return to orbit so that we can rendezvous with the orbiter. That is huge. Luckily, I do have a few tools in my toolbox that are going to help us achieve that. Primarily, tweak scale, which means I can make engines much bigger and we can squeeze more Delta V out and all of that kind of good stuff. And we're also going to be using near future technologies and far future technologies. I've gone for far future rather than KSP Interstellar Extended. It's a newer mod, it looks a lot nicer, and it's something different than I had before. So it's gonna be exciting to delve into all of that cool new tech, and it's gonna make my life a lot easier. So anyway, the premise of coming home, which I've not talked about yet, is Kerbal Kind. Several billion years ago, Kerbal decided to go on a bit of a rampage and die. So we retreated away to a new star system, the Temper system, and we find ourselves on a new planet, a new home planet called Road. So Kerbal is in this save, and what we want to do is we want to return, we want to come home and colonize the Kerbal system yet again. I want to go to Lath, I want to colonize Lath. It is now called Tau in this, but we are using USI for colonization purposes, and we are also using extra planetary launch pads, which will help with building rockets off world, which is going to be great. There will be a full mod list in the description of this video, though, if you do want to go and check that out. Anyway, we have built up Prometheus 1, which will be our Ash mission. What we're going to do now is come to Kerbal Manifest, Ship Manifest, rename some of the Kerbals from my Discord application. So if you want a Kerbal in this series to be sent off and brutally mur- I mean- <laughs> sent off on many exciting adventures. Well, there will be a link to my Discord in the description. Go to Kerbal Applications, put your name down, and you will be surely killed. I mean sent off on a great adventure, yes! Talking of Kerbals being surely killed, though, we are launching our first mission of this series. And we have two brave Kerbalnauts on board this rocket, and they are Ziggy Kerman III and Maximus Kerman. Ziggy Kerman has been a little bit of a meme for this series because we have killed him so many times. And actually, the first time Ziggy Kerman did die was on an Ash mission. He is going to be the pilot for this mission. Maximus Kerman is a scientist. Only Maximus Kerman is going to go down to the surface of Ash though. We're not going to send Ziggy Kerman down because, well, like I mentioned earlier on, he doesn't have the best of track records with Ash and I would rather keep him alive at least longer than an episode in this series. That, that would be the ideal goal. Can we keep Ziggy alive until episode two? I've got no idea. Well, I do because I've already filmed everything, but <laughs> we'll, we'll see what happens. Anyway, the reason why we've brought a scientist along is because I do have a Miss Rigo observation unit and a science junior on the lander. That is also another reason why Maximos is going to be going down. If we have a scientist, we can reset those experiments and only require one and farm as much science as physically possible. It's going to be great. We're going to get all the science to get new tech nodes and we'll get bigger and better missions very, very rapidly. 
That aside, we have now made our way to orbit with Prometheus 1. What's next to do is to plot over our maneuver to that far-flung moon using Principia. However, I noticed once I had done this maneuver, it's going to take us 32 days to actually get over to Ash. We've got 37 days of life support. That is not very promising at all. So we get an extra 15 days of leeway with USI where your Kerbals will be starving, but they won't die. So if it's going to take us 32 days, or it's going to take us roughly another 32 days to get back, that's 64 days. We've only got 37 plus the 15. That's not going to be enough. Luckily though, we do manage to get that down a little bit especially because of this rather odd maneuver. So I was burning what I had plotted out with Principia and I hadn't even finished my burn. And yet somehow we had gone on an escape trajectory of road. I had no idea what happened here. So I thought, damn it, we're going to need to turn around and we're going to need to slow down. Initially, initially, <laughs> originally what my thought was going to be is we are just going to return to road. We will get them back safely. Mission is scuffed. We're going to abort. However, after burning retro for a little bit, I did notice that we get our encounter with Ash and we're actually reasonably close. So with that being done and barely any fuel being expended to get this encounter, I thought, well, we might as well carry on with the mission as intended. Everything is good. We are good for our Ash landing. So we're going to Ash. What we're going to do now is we have, of course, decoupled everything and we're going to be performing a little bit of transposition and docking. Not my favourite thing to do because I really don't like docking and I've not unlocked docking autopilot yet. But to be fair, I have been practising docking a little bit in my free time. And I got a little bit better at it and it's not the worst thing in the world anymore. I, I kind of can, can read the nav ball a little bit better and I kind of understand what I need to be pressing in order to get us a nice dock. As you can see here, it really wasn't that bad at all. And there we go. We have managed to dock to the, 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 the lander space station section of this mission, whatever you want to call it, the habitation section of this mission. It's just a quick little change to our maneuver in order to get us a nice close approach to Ash. And now we're going to be sending Ziggy Kerman the third and Maximus Kerman all the way over to that far-flung moon. It is very far away. Obviously, it's going to take us like 30 days to get there. That's an annoying thing that happened. The habitation for those two ran out and they turned into tourists. The reason why that happened is because I didn't actually enable the habitat on that space station module. A little click of a button meant that they did return to active duty, which was very nice that they managed to do that and I didn't completely balk the mission up. It wouldn't have been the end of the world because I do have a probe core on the, sta the space station module, the space station module. So we would have been able to return home, but it would have meant that we wouldn't have been able to get the crew out or do any of these crew reports, send the lander down. No, that would have completely balked the mission and it would have been really bad. We wouldn't have gained anywhere near as much science. And there is a chance that once we return to road, because there's no probe core on the Mark II capsule, that would have gone in nose first and they would have burnt to a crisp. But we were able to get over that problem anyway, and we have now arrived at our Ash Periaps. So we're gonna fire up that Poodle engine and try and get ourselves a nice low circular orbit. I like to go for a circular orbit because, especially for this style of mission, when we want to rendezvous the lander with the orbiter later on, it's much easier to plot out a rendezvous with a circular orbit rather than a highly elliptical one. It just makes my life a lot easier for when I get back. We weren't able to get a hugely nice circular orbit to begin with, but in a future pass, we do bring that down to about a 68 kilometer or thereabout circular orbit. It does change because we are using Principia, but that's fine. It's, it's close enough that I'm not worried. There we go. We are going to finally circularize that orbit like I did mention. We've got Maximus Kerman out a few times and he has gained all of the science that we are going to want. I am going to try and farm as much science as possible. And that is a thing about this save as well that is different. It is going to be a science career rather than a career career. Because if I'm going to be honest, I've got plenty of career careers that I've already done on this channel and I don't like the way stock careers work. It adds a challenge that 
to me isn't exciting. I like adding additional challenge to my games. I, I do enjoy a good challenge, but if it's a challenge that just makes things a bit like naff and boring, I'm like, well, I don't really like it. And I feel like that's kind of what stock career does. Science is much more enjoyable. I'm not gonna go crazy or overboard with the missions that I design either. I'm still gonna keep it fairly sensible. Like I'm not gonna be building launch vehicles that cost like billions of funds. No, cause that, that would be silly. But I am gonna have a bit more free reign with money and all of that. It's gonna be a bit nicer and it hopefully should make for better watching as well. Anyway, Maximus Kerman has transferred down to the lander and we are now making our final approach onto the surface of Ash. And any minute now, we will be touching down. We have a little bit of a janky maneuver right there, but we do manage to eventually touch down safely. What we're gonna do is we are going to grab all of the science that we possibly can from the lander to begin with. I didn't put a communications device on this lander, so we are gonna keep that and re, well, not even retransmit it. We'll transmit that as soon as we rendezvous with the orbiter later on. But Maximus Kerman is of course out. He's gonna plant that all important flag, the Ash Landing Site 1, and it's the first landing of the series. He's also grabbed some very important moon rocks and all of that kind of stuff that I'm sure the people back at research and development are gonna have an absolutely fantastic time looking over. And hopefully no one steals them to do naughty stuff with them, which is actually a news story that I read about the other day that someone stole some moon rocks and ended up getting a little bit frisky with them. That was a, <laughs> that was a very interesting read. Uh, they, they ruined billion or not billions like millions of dollars worth of moon rocks which was a little bit unfortunate as well but yes yeah and they they claimed they they had some pretty pretty big claims over that it's it was it was a crazy news story i'm sure you'll be able to find it if you search stolen moon rocks i'm, I'm not gonna go into any more than that anyway we have made ourselves back up to orbit i wanted to do this quite quickly because i forgot to put life supplies life supplies life support life support supplies on the lander and as I have mentioned, we do get a bit of a 15 day leeway, so it's fine. But to be honest, I didn't want our inclination change to be drastic when we launched. And I'm sure Maximus Kerman wants to get back to the lander as soon as possible so he can get his snacks. He's not had his Kit Kat break. He could do with a Jaffa cake. I'm sure he really wants the biscuits that are on board that orbiter. So this is the first time that I have ever performed a rendezvous using Principia. And I was dreading this, and I have no idea why I decided to do a crewed mission with my first ever rendezvous with Principia. Probably because I'm a little bit of a masochist, apparently. I think that's the right word. Or is it Sadie? I, I always get those mixed up. Anyway, I don't really want to talk about that now, if I'm going to be particularly honest. But you can see we have got our approach down to below 200 meters, which is great. I think that was sheer luck, though. I think I got very lucky with that. However, as I was watching this and editing this video together, I kind of, it kind of clicked in my head a little bit. Well, maybe if I'd have done that, that's how you do rendezvous with Principia. So hopefully the next time that I do rendezvous with something, it won't feel like it was sheer dumb luck. It will feel like I've actually planned that out properly. But we have managed to rendezvous with the Orbiter. And now it's just a quick case of getting Maximus Kerman over there. Unfortunately, one design flaw about this lander is I have not got full translation on this device. So the RCS pods that I have on there, I thought they had five pods for five directions because there is one that looks incredibly similar to that that does. Turns out I picked up the wrong one. So we are unable to move this in the direction that I want. So what we're gonna do is we are going to do the old lazy method of docking and we're just gonna point each of them at each other, press H on our keyboard so we can move forward and then that way we'll get a nice docking and everything should be good. The solar panels do get in the way though and I do have to disassemble them with Maximus Kerman so that we can actually dock because any minute now you can see, yep, we've bumped and we are unable to get those two together. Anyway, with that all being done, now all it's going to be is a return to row to finish up this mission. And I do want to talk a little bit about how, well, the formatting of this series now. It's not going to be like the next millennia where I go very cinematic and over the top with cinematics because I want to have these episodes kind of 
be able to release them a lot faster than I do a Next Millennia episode. And to be honest, Next Millennia, I get about 20 to 30 hours of footage that I condense down into a 20 minute video. And that takes a really long time. I want to be able to basically just play Kerbal Space Program in this, edit it, speed it up in post-processing, and then do a bit of a voiceover and then release it. It'll be, it will definitely mean that I get more content out and hopefully that should be good for all of you guys. It'll mean more content for me. Anyway, <laughs> we undocked from that then and we re to it because I did transmit all of the data that was transmittable once we rendezvoused and docked with the lander. What I forgot to do was take the surface sample, the goo and the science junior from the lander and put it into the orbiter. So that would have been about 250, maybe even more science that we would have lost if I didn't remember to quickly redock and go and grab that. It was very fortunate that I remembered that whilst we were still within like 10 meters rather than getting all the way back to road and thinking, oh dear, oh damn, oh good golly gosh, we have left the vast majority of our science behind. Yeah, that would have been pretty terrible. Anyway, we are making our way to road now. And with the USI screen up, you can see we do still have five days of life support remaining. They are starving. They've run out of snacks a long time ago, so I'm sure they are very cranky, very crabby. Ziggy Kerman the third and Maximus Kerman, they do look rather happy though, considering they've not had anything to eat for the past 10 days. That is rather, rather confusing. Maybe they're just so thrilled by the prospect of returning home, or at least returning to road. But we have detached everything now. I did remember to transfer all of the science across. We got a bit of a heat bar as we came through the atmosphere of road, which is always a little bit worrying. But we got through the worst of that very quickly. The parachutes do deploy and we do manage to get a nice lo loft. Soft touchdown on the midlands of road at about three meters per second. And there we go, we have landed. And with that, we gained 400 science from returning that capsule, but we gained 740 science in total from this mission. Obviously, we did transmit some data, and that means it is time to come to research and development and spend a lot of it. We get some more electrical advancements. We grab some miniature propulsion advancements as well. What I want to do in this series is kind of go down columns all in a row rather than just progressively advancing in one row. It's something I want to do, but I've left some stuff on that left column there because basically it's stuff that I'm not going to need for a very long time. And I thought, well, some of the stuff on that right column is going to be more important. We do grab a construction advancement as well, which is going to be very nice for building some cooler stuff like space stations and surface bases and all of that good stuff, which we will be focusing on future episodes. But for now, that will be the end of this one. I hope you've enjoyed it, and like I said, hopefully I should be able to get these out a little bit quicker than, say, a next millennia episode, although I am going away this weekend, so maybe not. Anyway, <laughs> I have been Karnasa, and I will see you later.